Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to East Central Missouri and the world, and welcome to the James Strong Show podcast, podcast number 261. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for making us a part of your day. I appreciate it. This podcast was recorded on the morning of Sunday, March the 27th, from the James Strong Studio in Western St. Charles County. Well, if you haven't noticed, hopefully you've noticed, but if you haven't noticed, uh, it appears that I've been slacking on the podcasts. It's uh, It's been uh, two weeks, I guess two weeks and a day since my last podcast. Um as the as you as you may have heard this explanation in traffic court in the past, uh, do I plead guilty or not guilty to this charge? Uh, my plea is guilty with an explanation. Let me explain to you what's been going on. Uh, lots of things going on, lots of moving parts in uh, in my daily life nowadays uh first and foremost and 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 most important uh is i've been caring for uh, aging ailing parents uh that's taken a lot of time uh this is not a complaint but it's just a fact i've been very blessed to still have both of my parents with me um i've had them with me for 62 plus years okay so that's a wonderful thing but uh they're getting on in years and and need more and more of uh, of the attention of me, my brothers, etc. Uh, so we're giving them that. So when you have that going on, uh, that takes a lot of time uh, out of your day, your week, your month, your year. Uh, also, there's uh, the COVID nineteen has uh, been actually waning quite a bit, and when that happens. Uh, customers all of a sudden want to see you okay so they want to see you they've got new machinery they've got new stuff uh which means that's an opportunity for me to make money so that's an opportunity for me to get on airplanes and cars and drive and see them so with the influx of extra business or with the potential of influx to extra business uh, influx of extra business what you have to do is go there see the customer give them what they need ask answer their questions and ask for the order so i've been on the road a whole lot more than normal. Uh, I guess I've been on the road half the time, at least now. Uh, today's Sunday, Monday, I, I head to uh, to Miami Beach for a trade show. And uh, so I'll be there until I come back Sunday night. So Monday through Sunday, I'll be gone again. So cross your fingers, and perhaps I'll do a podcast from Miami Beach. Perhaps I won't. I don't know. I will try. But here is my promise to you, dear listeners. I will continue to do the podcast on a regular basis. I will continue to make that goal to do a podcast about once a week, which means I'm going to miss a week here and there, which means hopefully I'll also have weeks where, uh, where I have more than one podcast in a week. So thank you for your patience. Thank you for your listenership. Thank you for uh, supporting the James Strong Show. Uh, but I got to do the day job, folks, because until I can make a good living at the podcast, then I need the day job, okay? And I'm not sure that that's going to come... Uh, come forth anytime in the near future. Uh, the podcast today, the essay of the podcast today, the meat of the podcast today, uh, title is The Jim Croce You Never Knew. Now, those younger people say, well, Jim Croce, who the heck is he? Well, if you're younger, you may not know of him. You know his music, but you probably never heard of him because he died in 1973, okay? So he will be, he will have been dead for, gosh, Next year will be 50 years Jim Croce will have been dead. That's, to me, almost unbelievable, but time does fly. Uh, he was an interesting guy, a uh, very interesting guy, who uh, was very popular, but most of that popularity happened after he died. So posthumously, he was a big deal. But there was a lot going on before then, uh, and it has to do also with just not the way he was, uh, the way he looked at things, but... Also, just the way the music industry works or worked as a whole. The music industry has changed dramatically. Uh, some say for the better, some say for the worse, but um, it has changed dramatically. So we'll take a look at Jim Croce, the music industry back in the late 60s, early 70s. And the Jim Croce, you never know. The, the Jim Croce, you never knew. The topic of today's essay. Before we get into that, a couple of things uh other than Jim Croce that are going on in this in this world. Baseball is back, okay? Is that a good thing? 
yeah, it's not a bad thing. I mean, I think those of you who listened to my my podcast uh, earlier know, knew my uh, my feelings on the uh, on the baseball situation, MLB, Major League Baseball. Uh, when billionaires and millionaires fight over who gets more money, um, I kind of lose interest because when a billionaire and a millionaire both cry poor, uh, I have a problem. Max Scherzer who was the player's representative, when this contract is over, he will have earned close to a half a billion dollars in his lifetime. To listen to him talk, he sounded like uh, like Karl Marx talking about the bourgeois and the proletariat. That did not ring true. Then you have the owners who said, well, look, we're just trying to make a living here. We really don't make much at this whole thing. You know, it's a lot of investment. We don't make any money. Some of these owners get hundreds of millions of dollars a year in television revenue alone. Don't tell me you're not making any money. Anyway, baseball's back. Will the people be will the fans be back in the seat starting on April 7th? Time will tell. The war in Ukraine. Uh as of this morning, as of 921 on Sunday, March the 27th. And I, I put this timestamp on it for a reason because in five hours, five days, whenever you listen to this podcast. Uh, the worm may have turned, and this may be old news. But it looks like the war is turning. The Russians are now, according to the Wall Street Journal, the Russians are concentrating on the eastern front. That's Dobas and the the breakaway provinces, okay? So a country as big as Russia, a nuclear power, one of the big three military mighty mighty men in the world, could not take over a small neighbor, Ukraine. So they've decided to back away from everything except for the Eastern Front, the breakaway provinces. Now, the Ukraine army has retaken territory up near Kiev and in other places. I'm not sure which happened first, the chicken or the egg. Did the Russians bail out because they were getting beat or the Ukrainians taking over territory because the Russians are pulling out? Don't know, but that's not really important. NATO says, according to NATO, that 40,000 Russian troops are dead, wounded, or missing. 40,000 in a month. Now, here's what you have to look at. Uh, I don't know if, the, I, I, sus, I suspect those numbers are very accurate, Okay. The Ukrainian government says that they've killed uh, 16,000 Russian troops. Maybe, maybe not. They're going to probably inflate those numbers for political reasons. But I don't think NATO would. 40,000 Russian troops dead, wounded, or or taken captive, or missing, I should say. Folks, that's more than Russia lost in 10 years in the Afghan war. And when you consider the United States lost 50,000 plus troops, now this is deaths, not death and injuries, in the Vietnam War. That is unbelievable. Now, the Russians have a history of just throwing people at wars. I mean, they lost, in World War II, Germany lost some 6,000 troops. There were something like between 23 and 28 million Russians that died, okay? 6 million, 23 to 28 million. Russia just does that. Or should I say Russia just used to do that? Of all the great powers that have been around forever, and you can go back as far as you want, uh, the Greeks, the Romans, the Mongols, uh, the Brits, the, uh, and I know I'm missing some, uh, the Ottomans. I mean, p- people who, who, you don't want to say ruled the world, but ruled a large portion of the civilized world once upon a time. Russia is about the only one who never has. They've never really won a war. Now, you can say they came out victorious in World War II, and they did, but not on their own. And for the first time that I can think of, they were not the aggressor. They were defending against the German army, the Nazis. But whenever they went on the offensive to try to take ground, to try to take over the world, they've lost every single time. And they've lost countless troops 
every single time. And the Russian people have just been content on living on vodka and beets for the sake of the motherland every single time. Perhaps not this time. Arguably the second or at least third most powerful army in the world cannot make ground against one little country, Ukraine. That's incredible. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean, this is a question, not a statement. Actually, this is a, yeah, a question, not a statement. Hopefully it's a statement, but definitely a question. Could this mean that this is the end of war as we know it? Now, you're going to think to yourself, oh, come on, Strong. You really think the wars are going to be non-existent now? I said, no, no, that's not what I said. I said, could this be the end of war as we know it? And here's what I mean. Russia masses 200,000 troops and tens of thousands of tanks and armored vehicles and other uh, pieces of machinery and physically invades a country. I mean... From a sports standpoint, this is like basketball. It would be like, uh, I don't know, Duke University taking on uh, University of Missouri, St. Louis, okay? One big powerhouse against a not so much, and they couldn't beat them. That's what's happening here. And that's why I asked the question, could this be the end of war as we know it? Now, who are the two sides in this war? Of course, the Russians, who are the aggressors. You have the people on the vast minority that say, look, the Russians have done this. It's time to nuke the Russians. So you have one extreme and the other. But who has prevailed? The ones that have prevailed are the center. Look, we can't physically engage the Russians or we risk nuclear war, but we can give the Ukrainian army all kinds of arms to defend themselves. That's what's happening. That's what's working. Okay. Now, there's a term as to what caused the success. There's a term for this group of uh, people from the United States, Canada, much of Asia, virtually all of Europe, many developing countries as well. They've all gotten together, and they're all singing from the same sheet of music. That term is the new world order. Now, once upon a time, that was a dirty word. But you have to admit that what's been prevalent in this whole mess is the fact that the new world order seems to be working. I mean, look at our economy. I mean, we're not in a recession per se, and we're not going to be in a recession. A recession is uh, two straight quarters of... uh, declining GDP. We're not going to have that. In fact, the only thing that's happened in this country is our rate of GDP increase has been uh, stifled just a bit. We were going to grow X, but now we're going to grow X minus 20%, something like that. Okay. So the economy here is very good. We had a correction in our stock market, which means a 10% drop. It's since come back. Now it's not come back to, to where it was, but we're not down 10% anymore. We had an up week last week, an up week last week in the stock market. And the explanation is, look, investors are looking past the Ukraine war. Now, what does that mean? I don't know. But what it does mean is if, if the people who, the adults in the room, for lack of a better word, who are saying, look, you're not going to win this war. If you're going to go ahead and decide to make a conscious effort of invading a country that has a democratically elected leadership, you're out. You are out. In fact, there's no more trade. There's no more banks. There's no more. They're even talking about kicking them out of the G20. If Russia is isolated, right now Russia is isolated. Their economy is devastated. It's ruined right now. And it will not come back for the next 10 years. If tomorrow Putin said, look, I'm sorry, we're pulling all troops out. Uh, Forget we're over here. It will take 10 years for their economy to rebound. And that's a best case scenario. And that's not going to happen. In other words, Putin is 